in this topic and this particular example 11, we're going on to look at an idea of proof called proof by contra positive. Now, hopefully you've already looked at the proof by contradiction examples and the kind of teaching behind that because this is a development of it. So if you haven't already looked at the previous examples on proof by contradiction, go back and do so. We're going to use the same uh, idea of uh, negation statements, but our focus is going to be slightly different. So the idea of proof by contrapositive is that we are using these kind of implication statements which say that if statement P is true, then it implies statement Q is true. So there's that linked uh, truth in the statement. That's what we're going to start with our conjecture. And the proof by contradiction uh, would say assume P and not Q. So we're kind of changing around half of it and we're showing that that's false. With contrapositive, we actually are going to find the negation of both of them. But in actual fact, what we're going to do is to reverse the order of them. What we're going to make an implication statement to say that the second uh, linked uh, statement, Q, we're going to find not Q, the, uh, the negation of that. And we're going to suggest that that implies not P, the negation of the first one. Now, the, the understanding that you've got to draw from this is that we're creating, in some ways, a completely uh, inverse conjecture, where you've got the negation of both statements. Now, what we're trying to do with proof by contrapositive is show that that new conjecture is true. And if the contrapositive is true, then the original conjecture must also be true. Okay, so we're not trying to disprove anything. We're tr with the logic is that if we can prove the contrapositive, we're then, by logic, proving the original. Um, I suppose if you were to take something like a, a statement to say, if a car, if a car is roadworthy, it implies that the car has four wheels, okay? Assuming it's a four-wheel car. So if a car is roadworthy, it implies it's got four wheels. Um, if that's P and that's Q, then not Q would be to say if a car has four wheels, the, the uh, negation of a car has four wheels is the car uh, doesn't have four wheels, okay? We can be, uh, or has less than four wheels, okay? So the negation is that if a car it has less than four wheels. The implication is not P, not if the car is roadworthy. If the car is roadworthy, the, the negation of that is the car is not roadworthy. And so the idea being, have a look at that new statement. If the car has less than four wheels, it implies the car is not roadworthy. That's basically saying the same thing as if the car is roadworthy, it implies it's got four wheels. If we can prove the contrapositive, we're basically proving the original statement. It's just sometimes the contrapositive is easier algebraically to prove than the original statement, and that's why it works so well. Okay? So we're going to try and create a contrapositive statement. We're going to prove that they are correct. Um, which is, by logic, proving the original conjecture true as well. Okay, so uh, what we're seeing, that's me just seeing there. So we've got an example. Let's have a look at an example here. It's not the easiest one, uh, to be fair, but we'll go with it anyway. So the example is, example 11, prove that 5 is a factor of n squared, then 5 is a factor of n. So prove that if 5 is a factor of n squared, so 5 is a factor of n squared is my statement P, and statement Q, 5 is a factor of n, P, and Q. So sometimes it's helpful to, in this kind of situation, to isolate it in this way. Uh, we can say that P says that 5 is a factor of n squared, 
and Q says five is a factor of n, which means that not P, the in, not inverse, the negation uh, would be simply that five is not a factor of n squared. Five is not a factor of n squared. And not Q, five is a factor of n, five is not a factor of n. So they're quite straightforward. So what we want to do is for the contrapositive, we want to say that not Q implies not P. Notice it's the other way round. So not Q is 5 is not a factor of n. Okay, so we can say if 5 is not a factor of n, then the implication is not P, 5 is not a factor of n squared. Okay, so first of all, I've got to create that. Now I have to uh, try and prove that to be true. Okay, so let's uh, do that. Hopefully, uh, 5 is not a factor of n. Well, 5 isn't a factor of n. Then we can say that n has to be a multiple of 5 say 5k, plus some kind of remainder, r, which is going to be between 1 and 4. Is that right? So n has to be a number which is a multiple of 5 plus 1, or a multiple of 5 plus 2, a multiple of 5 plus 3, a multiple of 5 plus 4. That's my kind of four options here. And I'll just call it r. As long as the remainder is between 1 and 4, then n is not a a factor, 5 is not a factor of n. Okay, so what we want to do is then let's examine n squared then. So n squared is equal to 5k plus r squared. Let's just square that out. I get 25k squared plus 10k plus r squared. And thinking about multiples of 5, because we're thinking of factors of 5. So we can express the first two terms as a multiple of 5 plus some remainder r squared. So we know that the first part of the term here, that's a multiple of 5. And onto that multiple of 5, we're going to add r squared. Now we know that r is either 1, 2, 3, or 4 which means we're either adding the square term uh, 1, 4, 9, or 16. And if we add 1, 4, 9, or 16 on to a multiple of 5, we're not going to get a multiple of 5. Okay. So the implication is that r squared is not a multiple of 5. The implication then being the n squared is not a multiple of 5. Which, what were we trying to find? We were trying to show that 5 is not a factor of n squared. 5 is not a factor of n squared. So what we've shown is back a wee bit to the top of the screen. If 5 is not a factor of n, then 5 is not a factor of n squared. We have proved the contrapositive to be true. You can just write down. Lost it. There we go. Get it there. 
also with Sissy. If Tithe is not a factor of N, it implies that Five is not a factor of N squared as the contrapositive is true then by logic the original conjecture is also We square proven. Okay, so proof by contrapositive uh, first of all requires us to understand the structure of our statement. We're going to the negation of Q implies negation of P. We've got to work that out from the original conjecture, we've got to create a contrapositive, we've got to then go through and find a way usually using algebra of proving that the contrapositive is true this time. And if the contrapositive is true, then by logic, the original conjecture is therefore also true. Okay, I've got another example, example 12. Actually, probably slightly easier. I should probably have done them the other way around. Uh, but uh, that's just the way it is. So check out the next one, and hopefully that will kind of help uh, reinforce the idea of proof by contrapositive.